This is Aussie Mac Zone. We'll cover everything Apple, including Macs, iPhones, iPads, and more. All this from an Aussie perspective. Sit back, relax, and insert yourself into the zone. The Aussie Mac Zone. Hello, everybody. Welcome to show 150, Aussie Mac Zone. We're off and running. So, um,. It is presented by ATH Web Hosting, and we've got a little message to celebrate our 150th episode from our Imperial Leader. So let's see if I can get this to work. Well, hi, it's Glenn from the Aussie Tech Heads. How you doing? I'm just here to, uh, yeah, wish the guys 150 episodes. So well done to you guys. Uh, it's uh, great to reach milestones, and a 150 is no small milestone. It's like three years of the Aussie Mac Zone, so great work. Keep up the good work. I hope there's another 150 and lots more. Look, most people don't really know the dedication it takes to, to produce a podcast. Uh, like, you know, there's uh, there's the uh, pre-work, which you go into figuring out what you're going to talk about, and then there's the post-work, which is like once you record the audio and the video to upload and, and you know, do all the tags and put it into YouTube and the into iTunes, so it's all, uh, you know, do your feed where it's all nice and and uh, happy for people that like you that download it and uh yeah it, it's just it's just a lot of work i know with the aussie tech it probably consumes probably six to eight hours of my week and i'm sure it does the same for michael and garth so uh yeah it, it's it's great to see that the boys are still going strong and it's great that and they're going strong because of you guys the listeners so we thank you guys for listening and subscribing and and keeping that show running as well so if you've got anything to add uh, and to ask them just drop them a line there michael is such a gun on the apples and garth is too it's uh they know everything so drop them a line if you want to know a question or if you want the show to be done in a, some sort of different way so all right so again happy 150th boys and we'll chat to you soon bye so thanks, Glenn, for those uh, kind words. And we have a pack show this week. And yes, we will tell you how you can win prizes shortly. So, Garth, how are you, superstar? Great to see you. I'm <laughs> fantastic, Michael. How are you? Very, very good. Garth, had a good week? I did. I had a fantastic <laughs> week playing with the beaters and, you know, getting getting into all the apple news that's happening so let's uh let's kick off number 150 yeah. actually michael 150 that's a 150. damn lot of sh- yeah. that's that's pretty impressive if we do say ourselves <laughs> say so and, and i'm pretty confident the sound is sounding much much better this week and i've just Excellent. fixed that video challenge so that's all sorted too beautiful yes so um Story one, London's contactless tube payment system is going global. The the contactless payment system used on London's transport network network, will soon be modified for use in other cities. Outside London, CTS provides similar ticketing technology to Brisbane, Chicago, Sydney, and (laughs) and Vancouver. I'm happy too. Uh, the non-exclusive <laughs> deal with TfL will allow the company to integrate technology developed f- for London's network into other transport in uh, to other transport systems. Bring it on! Absolutely. Yeah, the, now people the, swiping their you know swiping their phones through uh, through gates all over the yeah. all over the place. And they're watching. Yeah, and they're watch. Just yeah. rest the wrist. Pump, <laughs> pumped and ready. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, on the Gold Coast here, it's all the, the one system with Brisbane. It's just the whole southeast Queensland, you know, update the software and the whole lot's ready to go. Yeah, can't be too hard, honestly. <laughs> well, let's hope not, eh? You know, yeah. that's very cool. Very cool. Another great bit of software that, sh- that Garth put me on to last week. <laughs> um, <laughs> Apple is launching a reality TV show called Planet of the Apps. So we don't yet know the exact format of the show, but given it's competition about, given it's a competition about apps, it can't hold too many surprises. Think Shark Tank with fewer sharks and more viable product pitches. Contestants oh. are competing for mentorship, VC funding, and free marketing. So uh, we've got a link where you can all our awesome Aussie app producers can that actually go on and apply as well it's been a lot of mixed uh mixed reception to this one hasn't there yes it's a bit weird 
<laughs> and it came out the same week that Apple said that they weren't uh, going to be their own TV production company, and then but they've got this one show that they want to do. So yeah, I'm a bit confused well, myself. <laughs> I guess it, it is a separate company that's doing it. It's not actually Apple. They're just, you know, yeah. they're backing it, supporting yeah. them. I guess, you know, there's a separate company who, oh, I can't even remember what they're called now, someone I've never heard of anyway, who is actually producing and doing all the work behind it. Um, is is doing it, but then Apple are sort of supporting it. Yes. Um, one little interesting tidbit on this, I don't know, a lot of the listeners out there, probably a lot of you also listen to The Cult of Mac, so you already may have already uh, heard this one, cult, The Cult Cast, which is a, a funny show. Yep. Anyway, the uh, the main guy, well, one of the guys on there, um, Leander Kearney, who I think started Cult of Mac, actually owned the uh, domain um, was it? What was the domain? Uh, they just said it. it was the name Planet of the show. Planet of the Apps. Planet of the Apps. Yeah, he yeah. purchased the domain a little while back. Um, planetoftheapps.com a couple of years ago because he was planning on doing something. Never got around to doing anything with it. <laughs> got uh, got a call from a just you know a guy down in Texas or somewhere <laughs> who offered to buy it off him, and he thought, oh yeah, I've never got around to using this. Yeah, all right. Negotiated a bit, got a got a few grand for the site, and um, two days later he sees that it was Apple. <laughs> <laughs> but, damn, I could have got even more out of it. Well, there was a yeah. uh, th- there is actually a company called Planet of the Apps in in Italy, I think. Uh, okay, yeah, so, yeah, very good. While I was researching that one, uh, locked out of iCloud. Do you use Spark for email? So uh, over the last 24 to 48 hours, a substantial number of users are reporting that they are finding their Apple IDs locked for security reasons inexplicably. The root cause appeared to be users of the popular Spark email app by Riedel, where customers can log in with their iCloud credentials. The iCloud warnings of a security hack are seemingly incorrect. Uh, There has not been a server attack or data leak as exclaimed by the app makers. In a statement on Reddit, Riedel says that server upgrades to an app appear to have inadvertently causing Apple ID password resets. So don't panic. And uh, away we go. Yeah, I do actually use Spark, but I haven't signed in with my Apple ID. I use a a Gmail account on it. Okay. So didn't get bitten by this one, but I guess it's uh, just pinging the server a lot. Yeah, you know, must be. and uh, they've gone, Hey, uh, something dodgy happened here, or it's all the automated in the responses. wrong password or something. So, yeah, so all is well, though. Yes, just uh, yeah. So, here's some good news. Here's the first first one. So, please pay attention. So, <laughs> we'll have uh, a $50, $50 iTunes or Apple gift card winner. Uh, that will be chosen at random from all members of our facebook group and it's all including current and new members that have signed up by the end of sunday august 7th 2016 so a 50 itunes $50. or apple gift card uh, winner will be chosen at random from all members of our aussie max zone facebook group so you do have to request to sign in for that that's pretty fantastic. So yeah, let 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 your friends know. Join in, get in. If you listen and you haven't bothered with the whole Facebook thing, get in there and um, let's start hearing some voices. Yes. Pardon me a minute. There we go. Love that new app, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Well, it saved, saved me a lot of editing. Oh, you did you listen to the audio of last week? I got rid yeah. of just about every cough in there. Just about everything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, smart watch users rank apple watch best in class in new jd power survey so the jd power 2016 fitness band device satisfaction report polled 2696 customers who purchased a smart watch which i don't know what's got to do with fitness band uh, between june 2015 and june 2016 questions covered ease of use comfort battery life phone connectivity features price durability display size appearance reliability apps available and customer service 
So based on the results of the survey, products were graded on a 1,000 point scale. The Apple Watch was the clear winner, earning a top rank score of 852, which placed it ahead of Samsung's 842. And then Sony were 840, Fitbit 839, and LG 827 rounded out the rest of the top five. So I'm a bit. Um, how many? Apps Sorry, you go ahead. You, yeah, how many apps can you actually get for a Fitbit? <laughs> yeah, pretty much none. I would have thought. Yeah. I thought they put that in a separate category. It was. Um, I thought they had in that server. They had a couple of different categories. They had the, you know. Your fitness bands and your your smart watches, yeah. so to speak. So. Um, but you know what? Really, look at looking at those numbers out of a thousand, ten points the difference. They're they're pretty. There's all sort of around the same sort of mark, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Not a lot of difference in terms of, however, they did their rating scheme. Yeah, it's um, in interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't know enough about the other ones. I'm very happy with my Apple Watch, and I don't shop around. So. <laughs> well, when you've already got the best, why do you? You don't need to worry about the rest. That's right. Exactly right. <laughs> that's that's why I've got you as a partner. Exactly. <laughs> well, oh, I thought you just got stuck with me too. <laughs> so Eddie Q says Apple not trying to compete with Netflix or Comcast, seeking to be delivery platform instead. Apple's senior VP of Internet Software and Services dismissed any interest in the company creating its own TV shows and addressed other topics like skinny channel bundles and a rumoured interest in buying Time Warner. So, yeah, that's... Planet of the Apps, aside. <laughs> yes. <laughs> any thoughts? No. I, I, it's hard to understand the sort of statement, isn't it? I guess, I guess, you know, there's a big difference between sort of, yeah, we'll lend you support to, for, you know, this planet of the apps and yeah. we will be the actual producers and, um, you know, yeah, we can't make the deals with all the providers. So we'll make our own shows. There's a big difference between that, yeah. you know, putting together a whole network in production house to produce a network's worth of shows um, is a far stretch from, from just backing a particular company who's making this planet of the apps app. Uh, sorry. Yeah, well, that could be just doing that as a sponsorship, even just that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not too sure exactly how the arrangements there, but they, you know, Apple's not the ones actually producing it. They, they, they're just sort of, yes, we'll lend you support, and and obviously they're they're going to work closely with them, with the whole app, you know, the app approval process and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yes. So I've just got a little mention here that uh, Australian Red Cross have a podcast called How Aid Works. It has 19 episodes so far, and some examples are Earthquake, War and Famine, um, We Do It Our Way, The Peter Pap of Elbola, uh, Ingenuity, which is from a sanitation engineer, etc. So it, it's on iTunes, and it's... Um, the Australian Red Cross uh, yeah just maybe get in and have a listen and might might um, help you understand how, how it all works and then maybe you can donate to the Australian Red Cross and understand where yeah. you, you know have, have a better understanding of where your money goes that's that's the sort of podcast you listen to that you know you listen to us and you'll you'll occasionally you'll, you'll most of the time you might pick up something you get some opinion, you get some views, you'll get a bit of information, you'll get a how-to. Listen to that one. I'm sure you'll really learn something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, Apple plans to build better iPhone cameras with new research in France, uh, a new research centre in France. Apple is said to have already established a team in the area, but will be expanding its presence at a new 800 square metre facility. That will employ about 30 people, according to uh, leaderfine.com, a French language publication, uh, as first discovered by local blog iPhone.fr. So, yeah, and maybe this is part of uh, spending money in Europe so that uh, 
this less of that tax evasion challenge because then they'll be sending money to Europe for the IP in the phone, for example, instead of having to send it to Japan for for um, uh, for the you know the IP or how how they want to ex- <laughs> however Sorry. they want to say it, you know. <laughs> yeah. I must apologise. I just had to step away from it there and shut That's the right. door properly up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. So that that's mm-hmm. just a new thing to look forward to. Whether that's got anything to do with the new camera that was supposedly in the next iPhone, or whether they've starting for the, the next next mm-hmm. iPhone, or the next 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 iPhone, or um, yeah. whichever rumor yeah. you want to add it into. <laughs> nice. So there's more rumours again of them splitting it into three phones, this upcoming iPhone 7. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that one. <laughs> so then we've also got, um, I'm sure you've caught up with this one, Apple's idea for music royalty royalties could stick it to Spotify. The Copyright Royalty Board, a three-judge panel that sets licensing rates, is trying to figure out what the statutory rate music download and streaming services will pay between 2018 and 2022. Uh, Now, the New York Times and Billboard report that Apple has a suggestion on how to figure out those rates that oh so coincidentally would negatively impact services with free streaming options like Spotify, heating up their back and forth battle, and YouTube. The statutory rate is what services pay unless they make a direct deal with publishers and can shape negotiations between them. The proposal, which has not been made public, would have streaming services pay 9.1 cents in songwriting royalties for each 100 plays, equal to the royalties of one download. Uh, This is much simpler than the current setup, which pays out a percentage of revenue and is obviously much lower for a free service. So, yes. (laughs) Yeah. Whoops. No, I don't know. What was that? (laughs) bashing my table or any <laughs> oh dear no I don't, and look it's it you can you know you can cynically go this is a swipe at all the free services but let's face it apple do offer free server free streaming music services yes um, beats one and a lot of the other channels in there are, are available free so but that's don't they fine. already have different direct negotiations. publishing direct, rights yeah. With the, yeah quite well do Quite possibly. But, um, damn shame. No, I don't, damn shame. Yeah, what, a, what a shame. But, you know, seriously, though, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a vendor, like on Spotify, I want to give away music. What gives me the right to give that away and go, well, you know what? The deal is because I don't make any money on it, I don't have to pay any rights on it. Yeah. No, so wrong. I want to, wrong. That, that, that I, shouldn't be how it works. <laughs> does that mean I can legally just go and start? playing music over the internet and not even oh. think about giving money to anyone i'm well, just people, doing it to... yeah, people do, but that, no that's that's not how it should be right <laughs> obviously no so and i think like 100th of so what we're saying 100 100 streams or one purchase for a download it sounds yeah. yeah sounds and what was it 9.1 one cent? cents yeah it's not a lot of money it's not it's a lot and of streams. Yeah. 100 streams of one song, 9.1 cent. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it sounds... Don't you feel, the pers- f- feel upset for the person that always gets 99 streams? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, they probably get 99. They probably get 9.08 cents then. <laughs> so yeah. it's all right. I won't worry about them. The th- <laughs> you know, the other funny thing about that story is three people making this decision. Yeah. There's a lot of businesses that are probably riding on that decision. Oh, there's life and death decisions made by less than three people. Well, this is true. This is true. <laughs> but yeah, they they're probably expected to take a lot of information in for those three people. You know. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like the record play, okay. yeah, you know, the record companies would be standing on the desk shouting out, and <laughs> yeah, everyone will be having their say. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we have fun. Um, Thanks for the good thoughts from Aussie Tech Security Podcast and Aussie Tech Heads Podcast. Um, 
yeah, just their thoughts are with us on our 150th. How awesome is that? 150. Um, so we've got some more <laughs> prizes now. So. I don't know where these prizes just keep falling out, <laughs> coming out from under the couch. Yes, I don't know how it happens. Yes. Uh, $50 iTunes or Apple gift card winner will be chosen randomly from our Facebook group that have retweeted the at Aussie Max Zone hash AMZ150 celebration tweet by the end of Sunday, August 7th. See, the reason we've gone out till Sunday, August 7th is for people that may not listen to listen till Saturday or Sunday. So everyone's got to have a chance to be in there. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. So, we'll, um, boom. I just tweeted it right then. Excellent. Thank you. So, if you are in in part of the Facebook group and you retweet that tweet by at Aussie Max Zone, um, you'll you'll notice it. <laughs> Happy 150th hashtag. Hope I win a hashtag iTunes gift card. Yeah. Um, yeah, you'll be and follow that account. You'll be uh, in the running for another fifty dollar gift card. <laughs> yes. So we'll just um, keep rolling along because there's still more to go. Unbelievable. We've got 150 <laughs> stories on a 150 show. It feels like. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm staying quiet. This is, you know, I'm, trying, I'm trying not to have too much to say so we can get through these stories so we don't keep you guys all night. Uh, backing up your eye device. As more people appear to be using the public beta on their eye device, it's a timely reminder to make a backup before you install the little gem. You can use iCloud or you can use iTunes. and That's my preferred method. Absolutely. Both methods are in the link below. So there'll be a link on the, on the show notes. Uh, Please remember to choose encrypt backup in the iTunes method and it'll save you hours because it just retains so much more information. Absolutely. Yeah. This is my general strategy with I with iTunes, sorry, with iPhone backups is to leave it on iCloud backup so that it, you know, each night it has a local it has a up to date backup yeah. once a week or so. Plug it into iTunes and force a iTunes backup with an encrypted password so you've got a local copy as well. Yeah. Don't, don't forget have to that do it password. <laughs> yeah. Encrypt. Yeah, but don't forget it. Yeah. When well, you check encrypt, Mac, it'll, it'll ask you for a password. Don't forget yep. it. <laughs> and probably suggest ticking the little box that says, add this, remember this password in your keychain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when it asks you. Because uh, yeah, we can look it up from there. That's pretty important. Don't yeah. Yeah. So uh, six smart keyboard shortcuts. So command plus H equals return to home screen from the smart keyboard as opposed to command H on the Mac hides something. So yeah, it just takes you back to your home screen. Yep. Or if you press the globe key, uh, that equals emoji access from the smart keyboard, so you can go and choose your emojis. The command plus the tab s switch between the app screens, which is really cool, same, same as on the Mac. Command plus space, spotlight search. Again, same as on the Mac. They've done pretty good. And yeah. now if you go command plus an arrow key, uh, that lets you, say, jump to the top or bottom of a page or document or to the beginning or end of a row of text. And uh, if you hold the command for a second, this will bring up the specific app shortcuts. A little screen comes up on the on your iPad, and it says, you know, hold these keys down to do something else. Copy, paste, whatever. So, yeah, pretty yeah. cool. And definitely recommend holding down that command key in lots of apps, and you'll be surprised to see that at least a lot of the Apple ones, Apple produced apps, there's a lot yeah. of keyboard shortcuts in there yeah. in your mail app and places like that. You know, you, you command N to create a new mail and command shift D to send and all those sort of things. A mm -hmm. lot of those will work um, on your iPad now as well. Excellent. So then um, this is something that, that you'll notice not very often and you go, oh, how do I do this? And then you don't worry about it for a little while and then you go, oh, how do I do this? But I'm going to tell you, tell you how to do it now. So deleting old email addresses. So 
to delete old email addresses in mail. So mail keeps a list of the email addresses you send messages to and, it, and uses the list to suggest or complete addresses for you when you send email. You can delete obsolete or incorrect addresses because I've been known to spell a name wrong and then it keeps that. Mm -hmm. And then because it's the first one it suggests and you select it, then you send it to the wrong one again. And then a month later, you send it to the wrong one again. I'm an idiot. I oh, know. Um, I've done the same thing. Don't you worry. <laughs> you can delete obsolete or incorrect addresses from the list and use it to quickly see or add people in the contacts app. So you choose window. Remember, this is in the Mac mail app. Mac, choose yep. the window previous recipients and then do any of the following. Sort the list. Click a column header. Search for a name. Enter the name in the search field. Remove a name from the list, select one or more names, then click remove from list or show names in contacts. Double click a name, a card icon precedes names that are already in contacts. So you know that you don't have to actually add a card for that one because you can already see that it's there. And it just, yeah, just gets rid of those old ones. Um, yeah. It's been about 20 minutes on my way to work the other day, doing this on my iPhone as well. Yeah. Because I had, I had an email address from my mum that was at google.com. Like <laughs> what I was thinking when I, when I was typing, <laughs> typing it in as at google.com, I have no idea. She got a promotion, did she? <laughs> she did. She did. She went from grandma to, uh, <laughs> to Google executive. No, so in the, in the mail app on, on your iPhone or iOS device, you have the same facility to get rid of those uh, recently used incorrect email addresses. <laughs> the nice little icon beside any of the ones that suggest a little more thing, you just click in there. And, uh, you know, you can obviously if it's one that isn't in your contacts, um, so if it's in your contacts, you'll just, it'll take you to the contact card. But if it's not in your contacts, you'll have an extra little icon and you'll be able to add it to a contact, create a new contact, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But also, you'll have a little option to remove from recents, which as same thing, you know, gets rid of the, clean it up a bit, <laughs> get rid of those dodgy email addresses that you don't want hanging about anymore. Excellent. So now we've got uh, even more prizes. So we've got two by $20 iTunes slash Apple gift card winners will be chosen randomly from new iTunes reviews that are showing again by the end of Sunday, August 7, 2016. So, yeah, go there. Some people aren't into Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Just whip up into Apple's iTunes, give us a rating and um, add a review if you'd like to add, add a review in there as well because you can do just ratings um, yep. or add a review and go from there and hopefully we can supply you with a prize so that would Absolutely. be awesome yeah so i've run out of things to say my friend what about you <laughs> oh, you never run out of things to say michael <laughs> that's um fantastic bunch of prizes so guys please do get involved jump onto the facebook group um follow the twitter account and, and retweet that one um we love hearing from you and getting emails and stuff like that so by all means send send an email um Last little bit of news, I guess, just today, we've seen the dropping of a whole heap of updates for just about everything, I think. Michael, isn't there? The 2.2.2 yeah. uh, for the watch, which I haven't actually seen yet, but is supposedly out already. Um, new version of the software for the Apple TV. I can't remember the, the number there. Um, you've got your last releases of well, what we suspect to be the most, the last releases of El Capitan and iOS 9.3.3. Yeah. I know a lot of people will tend to hold, you know, when, when a new operating system like iOS 10 or Mac OS Sierra come out, they'll sit back on the old version for quite some time because um, they know stuff works and they don't want to update until they know everything works. And that's, that's a valid yeah. Yeah. position to take. Um, these last couple of updates that we're getting now are probably really good ones to have uh, because, the, you know, they're the ones that have been really 
every you know the it'll they're the cleanest versions of the the of the current version you're going to get you know what i mean yeah um that's the one with the most bugs cleaned up out of this (laughs) before we introduce a new batch of bugs with the new versions of os 10 and and uh ios 10 so good ones to have and and keep if that's how you like to roll um it's not necessarily how i like to roll (laughs) but um (laughs) But it's yeah, like I said, it's definitely a valid, a valid position. Yeah. Um, so one thing to check when it actually does come time to update, uh, and you're thinking about updating, go to the um, who, whatever app you're thinking about on the Mac or on the phone or on on the watch. If there's if there's a particular app you depend on, for example, your house security system. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a company called Canary, and their app doesn't work with Sierra yet, for example, and that's a house security system app. So it's pretty important to have that actually working to let you know whether you have a challenge at home or not. So, um, yeah, you just go to the, the company's homepage and see if there's any uh, questions or comments about upgrading or not working or... And, and until you're happy that, that that's been resolved, that's when you can do the update. And also, exactly. yeah, so I can't, because we can't even guarantee if you update, you'll be able to roll back after you've done a backup. You can't always do that. No, no. So if you're playing around with the beaters at the moment and there's new beaters out as well for all of the everything, yeah. all the beaters are out again for the developer versions of them at least. But if you're playing around with beaters, that's fine. Um, cause usually, you know, you're going to be able to roll back from OS 10 or, or iOS 10, um, roll back to prior versions. But like you said, Michael, once you update to an actual release version, there's usually only a couple of days of grace, if that at all, yeah. to be able to get back. Um, so be sure, be sure. So yeah, thanks mate for our 150 shows. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for all the hard work you put in over the last however long it's been. Um, I think, I know, yeah. It's all fun. It's all fun. Yeah, it's good stuff. Done for the love of Mac. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. Thank you, Michael. Enjoy.